uh, to, to, to tune into. Just looking for notification that we are live. And I'm just fixing a few little uh, minor things here, Helena, that I forgot. No worries. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a great topic today for sure. Yeah. All right, and let's just get us in. Mm, Holly, this is interesting. Might take a moment before I get the notification that we are live. All right. Us. We should be good. I'm going to just let me know that, and then I'm going to start our recording. Good. Technical things, eh? Yeah, technical things like right now, I'm, I'm going to the Emotion Code Divas page, which is facebook.com forward slash tecdivas.com. And it's saying that it's unable to load. Isn't that interesting? Hmm. It says that we're broadcasting. Hmm. And I am going to go to my uh, notifications. See what's happening Looking for a notification. Yeah, a little technical difficulties are fine. Yeah, that's right. Has the chatter away here, and well, it's it's a great topic. Um, yeah, looks to me like we're live, so we're good. All right, we're gonna start this recording. Welcome to episode 41 of the Emotion Code Diva Show. Helena Jenik and I, and I um, love to do the show. Our mission really is to educate, inspire, and heal and release some trapped emotions uh, during the show for one of our viewers. And we have a viewer that stepped up today who has writer's block. <laughs> so we, even though that's the topic, I mean, you could have written a book or uh, as I have a couple of books, or you might just be a blogger or you might be somebody that has a newsletter that uh, needs to get that done, or maybe you're creating a new website and everything's good to go, all the background stuff is done, but you haven't done the text yet. <laughs> so I've often in my coaching practice written a lot of text for people because I do have the sacred gift of writing, so it's it comes very easily to me, but not to everybody. That's why there's copy copywriters, editors, all that sorts of things. So I'm Dana J. Smithers. I am a certified emotion coach practitioner. I am also a certified animal Reiki practitioner. I just finished up uh, another course this weekend, so love uh, working with animals. I can do it um, in person or in distance, just like we do the emotion code. And I'm a law of attraction uh, life coach as well. And I'm going to talk a little bit about the law of attraction and how it helped me uh, write the books that, that I have done. So that's a little bit about me. Today's topic is going to be very interesting. We love to have your comments. So please do post, say hello to us. But in the meantime, let's go over to Helena Jemigan. <laughs> Thank you, Dana. I am Helena Jenikin. I'm a certified emotion code practitioner. I'm also a certified clinical hypnotherapist. And in my hypnotherapy practice, I see people that want to release weight, remove anxieties and fears, especially around the uh, dental fears. I, I specialized in hypnodontics. And but my, my real claim to fame, I like to say, <laughs> is that I help people stop smoking in one hypnosis session. Now, with all sessions, with all my hypnotherapy sessions, I always incorporate the emotion code. Emotion code has been wonderful addition to my hypnosis practice. There you go, Dana. Absolutely. And uh, just saying, uh, I want to say hello to Natasha Paula Samuel. She was always, uh, she's a, a regular viewer, and we really appreciate her. And we do hope that she learns things from the show as well. And Natasha, we haven't had a weather report yet from Rumford, Essex. So uh, yeah, Helena and I were just saying, we're, we've been so used to the sunshine and today it's it's a bit cloudy, but you know, fair enough. We've had a beautiful fall and the leaves have been spectacular. All right then, why don't we just go ahead and we're gonna um, just jump right in. Helena and I are both trained by Dr. Bradley Nelson, and you can buy his book. Uh, you can get it online, or it might be in stores as well, called The Emotion Code. And in here, he talks about how to go, th how to do emotion code. He talks about a lot of case studies. And Helena and I know, um, you know, just from our experience, how 
much somebody can be ready to do something, but they're just feeling a bit stuck. And so Dr. Brad says that where we're stuck with these emotions, they could be the size of a lemon uh, in your body, which can actually call, cause some physical illness and they can be as large as a cantaloupe. So, you know, you can have these, you know, hundreds of trapped emotions all over your body and the emotion code releases it. So um, Helene and I are gonna talk about how that's done. So if we're conducting a session um, distance, then what we first do, or in person, we always have to ask for the person's permission. That's right. We we need person's permission. It's, uh, we just can't work on some stranger that we see uh, from a distance. <laughs> I know. I, I as much as we like to, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. We, we we need to ask permission, and uh, well, when we, when we work with the parents, we can get their permission to work on their children and or their animals. Yep. That's exactly. And so how how we do that by becoming their proxy. Mm -hmm. And what Helena was just saying about children or animals, they will, they, we will become and use something as a surrogate. So, for example, um, if I'm doing animal Reiki, then I can actually use a, a picture of them or I can use a teddy bear, but I still become the proxy. So with emotion code, explain what, what does that mean when we're the proxy for somebody with em when we're using the emotion code on them? Certainly. So the proxy. Um, allows me, um, when I get the person's proxy, allows me to tap into their energy and ask their subconscious mind direct questions. Now, the only questions I can ask are yes or no questions. Um, the other question might be, do I need to know more information? Do we need to know more? Yes or no is the answer. And uh, yeah, it's just a very effective means of working either in person and or distance. Exactly, and so one of the questions that uh, we ask the person that we're working with um, is how severe do they think the stress is, the pain, or in this case, the writer's block. So when I ask the person, somebody I know, Terry, um, what, what, how bad is it? And he's going like, well, probably eight or nine. So, so this is where we ask is on this level of one to 10. So mm -hmm. what will you be doing when now I've said it's eight or nine? What are you going to do as an emotion code practitioner? Well, once I tap into his uh, into his energy, I'm going to ask his subconscious mind to uh, what the subconscious mind believes the uh, severity is, and I will get a, uh, an answer there. And then my intention is by the end to reduce that number and preferably get it down to a zero. Mm -hmm. Right, and so this is where uh, we are, emotion co practitioners is going to use what we call muscle testing. So Helena is saying, well, we're going to get down from an eight or nine to maybe a one or two or a zero. How do we know that? Well, this is where we use muscle testing. So Helena, give us a little explanation of that. Sure. So I have an agreement with my subconscious mind that when I ask a question, a yes or no, that requires a yes or no answer, um, what I do is I link these two fingers together into a circle, and then I, when the answer is yes, my fingers just stick together. They, they just won't come unlocked. And when I think of a no, they just slip apart. So this will be a yes, and this is a no. Exactly, and I'm glad you're stressing the fact that we only ask yes or no questions. Um, that's all the subconscious is going to give us with the muscle testing. So mine is a little bit different, but again, Dr. Brad has lots in his book, he's got uh, different techniques he'll show you, or certainly online. But uh, I use my index and thumb together, and then my other two fingers, uh, middle and index, and that's a yes for me, and that's a no. So we can do it fairly quickly while we're going through the emotion. So this is what we're actually looking for to release. That's right. And so when I'm doing the work, um, or when, whenever an emotion code practitioner is doing the work, uh, to speed up the process, because there's 60 negative trapped, uh, 60 emotions on that chart. So what I will be asking is, is, is the emotion, is there emotion that can be released? Yes, great. Is it in column A or is it column B? Is it in an odd row or an even row? 
and then I get down to a particular cell. So, you know, row five, then I'd be asking uh, B5, um, I'd be asking, is it conflict, creative insecurity, terror, unsupported, or wishy-washy? When I get the answer yes, then we'll release it. And we release it by using a magnet. A magnet, that's right. Mag work. Well, magnets are pure energy, and what they do is they cancel out the energy, the negative emotion, and they intensify my intention to do so. It all starts with intention to do so, to release the negative trapped emotion. So what you'll see me doing and an emotion code practitioners doing is taking their magnet and swiping it over their head like this, three times if it belongs to them and 10 times if it's inherited. Yes, we can inherit it, we can inherit emotions from uh, our parents, our grandparents, and even down the line. Mm -hmm. And uh, Dan, talk about this uh, governing meridian that uh, starts right underneath the nose here. Yeah, so we have about uh, 12 uh, major meridians in our body. And we also have seven chakras that most people are aware of. So what we're doing with this governing meridian, if we were working in person with someone, we would be demagnetizing the emotion by just on the top of the lip here going down the back and all the way to the spine and we would swipe that down and that's just re uh, demagnetizing just like in a wallet you know if you get your wallet too close to the mag or the credit card rather too close to anything magnetic then it demagnetizes it's the same thing because energetically we've already set an intention that we're going to help this person they've come to us so you know the universe is getting a message this person wants to make some changes and so when we take the magnet from there that governing meridian and go down the back we're you know figuratively and literally because energetically this is this is the work that we do we're just bringing it up and releasing bringing it up and releasing and demagnetizing and um, Helene and I both have hematite magnets, which are really heavy and strong. But, you know, if uh, I've been in a situation where I haven't had my magnets with me, our ha hand has mag magnetism to it. So you can just use that. Or Helene and I were just talking earlier, if you really had to and you were working on someone and they'd given you permission, uh, let's think of an example. Maybe somebody's on stage and they're speaking and they've asked us to work with them so we've done some pre-work or whatever well we're not let's say they've given us permission we're not going to sit there and go like this in the audience but we can intend that so we can energetically attend that right because you know a lot of i was trying to explain some of this to my husband, and uh, <laughs> i said well think of the wireless people don't understand how that works anything wireless right so, you know, how is it with your phone? You can pick up signals or radio stations or whatever. Well, it's the same for us when we're energetically attuned and we're going into that person's subconscious to do the work. And as part of um, us doing the work, what allows us to do the work is that the energy flows freely through us. And this is why we always need to be hydrated. That's right, because energy flows through, um, electricity flows through water rapidly. And when we hydrate our bodies, the practitioner, then the energy will flow more rapidly. So any practitioners out there that are, are learning the emotion code or just practicing it, one of the key elements is to hydrate. And uh, I find that my clients are also finding themselves hydrating during the session and yeah. especially afterwards. So cheers, Dana. Cheers, yeah. And ladies, it's just a good thing to do for our skin. Mm. All righty. So let's, we've got that. Those are the steps if you haven't watched the show before. Um, so let's talk. Oh, uh, Romy Carlin, or sorry, Romy Carlin is watching. Hi, Romy. Uh, Natasha just gave us a weather report. Uh, <laughs> it's sunny with blue skies, mainly all day today. But getting cloudy now as it's coming up to 6 p.m. in the evening. <laughs> and there's Sylvia Bellini. We haven't heard from Sylvia for a while. Hey, Sylvia. Same here in South London. <laughs> Saves me having to write this out. Sylvia, you got writer's block. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So um, Helena is going to go ahead and uh, 
work on releasing, we'll find out what emotions she releases for Terry, who's got some writer's block um, around doing, he, he's an entrepreneur, he needs to get some reports done, and he needs to get his newsletter out. So if that's something that happens for you, you can always contact Helena or myself for an emotion code session. So I'm going to talk a little bit about writer's block. So um, I have written uh, a couple of books. As I said, one of my uh, sacred gifts is writing, so it's not that difficult for me to write a book. So the first book I wrote when I was in this, this was a different career that I had um, called a home staging business, how to start and run a home staging business. So this is a, a how-to book. It's all about business. It's all about being um, an entrepreneur. And when I, I was one of the first women in Canada to start uh, home staging and also to create a home staging training program, which I did. And I wrote, I was actually contacted by a publisher to write this book, Self Council Press. So they contacted me and then um, we put together um, this book that has, it's all, it's, it's business. It's not pictures about how to stage, but it's how to start and run a business. So with this book, um, I worked with an editor. I worked with um, uh, all, all the team to get the photographs done, the pictures done. And you can tell this is a while ago because it actually has a, a, a CD in it. Now we don't do CDs. It, you can actually get everything online and just download because I did about, um, I don't know, maybe 30 uh, forms that go with how to start and run a home staging business. So that was in 2010 that that was originally uh, published, which means that I kind of wrote it the um, about six months before a book actually gets to the editor and, and then they meet their deadlines. So what I had to do for that book, as well as this book, this is my more a biz, um, you know, world that I'm in now, the space I'm in, rather than home staging as I sold that business, but uh, my gratitude journal, Law of Attraction Gratitude Journal, it's a 52-week journal. So this one didn't require as much writing. Um, basically, I did 52 weeks, and what I did is I, I thought of a uh, Law of Attraction tip that people could have. I gave an explanation. I also did 52 weeks of Law of Attraction videos where people can get a little bit more information about the tip. And then people just go ahead and do the journaling. So the, the writing that I did is, is primarily um, at the beginning of this book. And then uh, the pages, the rest of it, because people are journeying, they're writing their own comments. So the questions and statements that they finish stay the same. So the first thing that you need to do when you are going to write a book is just be clear on it. So you need the clarity. So the first thing that I always do is I think about why am I writing the book, right? What's what's the purpose of the book? Um, and also, obviously, who's my audience? Who would buy this? Who needs this book? Who can benefit from having this book? So my first one, the Home Staging Business book, uh, because staging was brand new in Canada, I really felt that people that were starting out and that are over training um, could use a book and more information about how to do it. And of course, it's now has a global reach. With the law of attraction, what I thought about and what I did first is, you know, I thought about what about a tip and then what about uh, prompts for people to write. So that was the clarity that I got. And then I got focused. And the focus that I find, the way I get focused is by looking at a table of contents, right? What would be, what would people want to hear? It, like this one, it's 52 weeks. So I thought of 52 um, topics and I went ahead and wrote this work first and then so it's it's I had the clarity of who my audience was and why I was writing it I got focused on what I wanted to be and the chapters that I wanted so in the case of um, this one the um, the home staging book there's a lot more chapters in it and there's um, sub chapters and um, yeah, on and on. Let's see how many chapters did I do. Um, yeah, so I did 17 chapters in this book. I gave samples of things and then lots of forms to people to look at. So it's thinking about what's going to be useful for them. So you've got the clarity, the focus. And then what you have to do is take the action to do it. 
So this is where the writer's block can come in. And this is where the emotion code can play a really, really big role in, in um, removing those trapped emotions that, you know, it might be procrastination, it could be the fear of success, it could be the fear of failure. I mean, the when I first wrote that book, I was very focused on the home staging industry. I knew that I wanted to help um, anybody that was going into the business because with a lot of uh, creative arts, also with healing arts, people that are, are healers um, or artists or anything that we do, we can be really good at the craft. You can be a fabulous hypnotherapist, just like Helena. You can have your specialties, but until you actually take action and let people know who you are and market yourself, and a lot of that marketing does require that you provide written information about who you are, even if you're doing a video. I mean, Helena and I don't sit and, you know, when we first started, we, you know, I had done, okay, this is the format of the show, but we don't have to look at that anymore. We just have to look at what each episode is. So we do do a little bit of writing with it, but we know what we're doing, so it comes more easily. But there are times when it's it's like, hmm, I wonder what we'll talk about today on the show, right? And so in a way, it's a little bit of writer's block up here in the head, even though we're not writing a lot of information, but we are delivering information. So it's the same kind of thing. Even if you're going to do just um, some some uh, video blogs or you're going to do uh, instead of maybe going to write as well, but all of that could be considered having writer's block if you're not able, you've got the clarity to focus, but you're not able to take the action to do it. So that's where emotion code can just loosen that all up can just have you relax, whether it's hypnosis or whether we include some Reiki in there or not. But Emotion Code is fabulous for doing this. And I know this because Helena has done a number of sessions on me. I've done some sessions on Helena when we were working together and I was coaching her. What do we want the stop smoking lady to be saying? You know, what's the message? All those sorts of things. So, so get clear, have the clarity, get focused, and then determine what your action steps are to move forward with it. And if you really want to know more, you need some help actually writing, then uh, feel free to contact me and we can talk about that as well. So Helena, looks like you're finished. So I'm really curious uh, what yeah. came up. Yes, it was, um, it was very, it was very interesting. Um, so the very first emotion that was uh, trapped was uh, pride and that pride uh, we talk about is the false pride like maybe i got the first so my intuition was do i really need to do another newsletter it's like don't they know everything and and, and just it was i don't know it was like that. kind of a yeah. another one um anyways and then the next one was failure and very rapidly after that came effort unreceived although I needed to know more, so it was around the age of 25 that effort unreceived got trapped. So that meant that something happened around the age of 25 where the emotion of um, effort not being recognized didn't get fully processed and just kind of got stuffed down into the body. And then right after that came rejection, exactly, the, the lemon, um, rejection around the age of 18. And when I was when I was doing that, I, I almost saw a, a school final exam type essay type thing. That was... uh, well, I'll, I won't I won't disclose anything personal there, but uh, it was eight, 1819 where the rejection came in, um, kind of from a school. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. And and uh, so the fifth one was uh, hidden. So it was a trapped emotion that was hidden. So uh, just asking questions a little bit differently, indecisiveness. And then uh, some psychic resonance was there, a shock. So that psychic resonance is uh, when it's kind of throughout the life. Mm -hmm. It's just underlying. It's like a little vibration that's underlying. Uh, and then the um, so at that point, I asked, um, uh, oh, the next one was low self-esteem, low self-esteem. And after that, then I checked in to see where we were on the severity level. So oh, a severity level, not a seven, not an eight, not a nine. It was a 10. 
<laughs> and that's why and, we like uh, to check in, right? That's because yeah. the subconscious is really going to tell us what's going on, right? Yeah. Because the conscious yeah. mind is way up here, but that's not really always the truth, right? No, no. So, so I got it down to uh, a two, and then I uh, I did it one more time, but I changed the question. I changed the question about do I believe that I will write another newsletter? And I'm sorry, that's when the low self-esteem came up. Okay. And once that was released, then it came to a zero. Great. So I would be expecting a newsletter from Terry in the next <laughs> two days. That's right. And his newsletters are so good, right? But I think we get, like, yeah, like you said, the pride came up. And, and sometimes we, we should say that not always do the emotions that come up that are released really make sense. Mm -hmm. to us sometimes they just don't but remember it's a trapped emotion in your body from inherited from conception up until now so you know if it's not released it can stay there and stay there and get bigger and bigger every time it's triggered right that's how we get to the cantaloupe size and something right yeah. Yeah, hmm. exactly. well thank you so much for that thank that's you it's great you know, just one I was just going to say one note is that I uh, we like to tell our you know, practitioners that are learning the emotion code to ensure that they become them again. So yes. um, at the end, because I was tapped into Terry's subconscious mind, I want to release. And so I just thought about myself becoming myself. Am I myself? Yes, I was myself. A little story there. Um, last week I had a client in my office and uh, – and she was not feeling very well, and kind of sick, cold, sick, or, or so forth. And we decided to go ahead with the session. And I was doing the emotion code on her. And I was driving home right after the session going, oh, what are these aches and pains? And I, oh, I'm coming down with a cold. And I, I actually stopped the car, pulled over, and said, am I Helena? And it was a no. And it was like, oh, come back. And as soon as I came back, all those symptoms disappeared. Yeah, you're right, because, you know, we do have um, some people watching us that are new to the emotion code. So we hope that, you know, we give some tips that are helpful as well. But, um, yeah, you're absolutely right. Uh, sometimes I will forget, even though I have it big highlighted on my sheet, you know, when, when I'm working with someone. Um, but as soon as I start to put things away, it's like, oh, whoa, <laughs> you, know, you know, am I so-and-so? And I can remember other practitioners when I was learning saying that, I remember this one lady was saying that, you know, she, she never gets depressed and she was like, oh, what's wrong? And then it dawned on her that she hadn't uh, released the, the proxy subconscious with that person. So that is uh, important. And uh, yeah, I think with whatever kind of healing modality you do, um, you know, all of us want to get that closure at the end of it and just remember to do that. And sometimes I do forget, even with the Reiki, it's like, oh yeah, let's, you know, close it up because you don't need to be, um, you don't need to be putting that out there anymore. And it's not that you make yourself vulnerable, you don't, but you just want to close it off and just get back because that subconscious is very powerful. Indeed, all right. So Helena, can you just see if you have any different people on, on um, on your feed, I know we tend to get a little bit different. Yes, yes. No, I just see that Sylvia Bellini was saying, thank you very much for the demo. You're welcome, Sylvia. It's our pleasure. We enjoy this uh, this show so much. Yes, we do. And we do love, uh, yeah, we love making a difference and helping people. And um, yeah, so next, so this is episode uh, 41. Uh, yay, yay, yay for us, <laughs> right? Uh, and so next, uh, Wednesday is going to be fear of the dark, um, just because it's kind of Halloween, or uh, fear of noises, or if your animals are afraid of the dark or noises. So we would be happy to work on that. So if you haven't, if you've been on the show before, but it's been quite a while, um, you know, we're open to having some people uh, back that would like a session. We're happy to do that if, it, if it's been a while for you. And we would love for you to share this. Uh, we love the work that we do. So, Melina, how can people get a hold of you? Mm -hmm. People can get a hold of me through, uh, through, my, through my website, which is flourishhypnosis.com forward slash emotion dash code. Also have a Facebook page, Flourish Hypnosis as well as a YouTube channel, Flourish Hypnosis, and Helena Jenikin. 
Wonderful. all over the place. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and you can often find us in other people's shows or other people's uh, comments or whatever. Um, yeah, we like to be out there so people can know that they have other opportunities for, you know, non-invasive, um, you know, uh, healing modalities, right? Because you know, neither Helena nor I nor Dr. Brad would say that we ever cure a disease. We don't. We're not doctors. We don't make diagnosis. Um, you know, that's not our job. But we, you know, um, Emotion Code is a very holistic approach to whatever is going on. So it complements if you do, if you are getting surgery or, you know, your animal is or someone in the family even, you can, we can bring that Emotion Code energy into um, the space and just help you get through whatever it is you have to get through. Because I do see a lot, Helene, I'm sure you see it too, people posting on Facebook, um, you know, somebody's got cancer, somebody's just died, somebody's going through surgery. So, you know, we can do distance emotion code uh, sessions for them. And, you know, grieving is a big one. Um, there's no time limit on grieving. You know, it, it can happen, can go on for a very, very long time even though you think you may have grieved something or, you know, even um, come to terms with something, you may find that it, it gets triggered again. Yeah. So you can find me, uh, danasmithers.com forward slash emotion hyphen code. My YouTube channel is Empowered Women in Business. You can find me there and you can find me at my website, danasmithers.com. And um, yeah, check out what Helene and I do because um, there's always other things that we do. <laughs> that uh, are there to to help people and to make a difference and you know bring a lot of positive energy into the world and you know vibrations that um, have everybody feeling good regardless of what's going on out there right it's always about how you feel so we hope that you know that you feel good when you watch our show that you feel good knowing um, that even by watching the show, you are getting some of our energy, right? You're getting the positive vibes that we're putting out there. I mean, I'm, you know, I'm having a great morning. I love our show. I love looking forward to it and other things that we do as well. So that's it from the Divas. Uh, we'll hope to see you next week. Um, oh, Sylvia is just saying, I know she has a little Jack Russell. She said, I'm blessed with little Jack Russell who is not afraid of anything, but I know that fireworks and bangs in general scare lots of animals. It's a big issue. Yeah, it Actually, is. That's so, the, so last year um, when I was taking the training for the emotion code, uh, we have to work on animals and as a case study. So I worked on my dog, Roxy, and she had always been afraid of loud bangs and fireworks. And it was just about Halloween. And so people were setting off fireworks and stuff. And so she was just shaking, shaking. And so I, I was doing the emotion code on her. And as I did it, she slowed down and calmed down and went to sleep for the rest of the night. And then on Halloween evening, where the fireworks were really like a lot, uh, she slept through the whole night. Oh, isn't that lovely? Yeah. Yeah. So it, 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 it is a blessing. And, you know, it's a simple technique. It's not a a huge, huge monetary investment, and the results can happen very, very quickly. And uh, yeah, so that's it. That's it for us. Okay, we can go on forever, but the show's over. <laughs> so I'm just gonna <laughs> stop the re stop the recording for us. I'll just say goodbye to uh, Parmelia Bell, or good uh, hello and goodbye to Parmelia Bell. She just joined <laughs> us. That's right.